Hi guys, today I'm going to be doing another video in our series on how to do DIY cameras. Now this one is going to look at the same platform that we looked at last time, but instead of doing object detection on the camera itself, you can do AI detection of objects in the cloud. This will allow you to use lower powered cameras and then have them do the motion detection, but then use a cloud-based service for all of the object detection. So you're not going to be bogging down a low powered board doing AI on that board. So this is a solution that will work well for things like Raspberry Pi zeros that have a camera module attached to them or similar setups. So using this along with cloud services will give you the same effect as doing AI and everything on the same device, but you will just do the motion detection and then from there use the cloud. So I'm going to show you the solution in a conceptual view and then we'll look at the code and the setup on the Raspberry Pi. So the setup for this one is pretty similar to what we did with an all-inclusive solution on the board. We're going to start with a camera and that's going to connect to a Raspberry Pi. Now the camera, if you're using a Raspberry Pi Zero or similar device, you will need to use a Pi camera. So you will have to set that up, but otherwise you can use a USB camera or Pi camera and connect it to the Raspberry Pi and it'll work just fine. Now on the Raspberry Pi, you will have a piece of software called Motion, which is basically a daemon that's listening to the camera output. So it's basically watching for changes in the frames. If it detects changes in the frames, it detects motion. When it detects motion, it writes those results to the disk on the device as an image. So the camera writes to motion, motion then writes the output to a disk. Now the script that we're going to be using is going to be watching for new files on the disk. Now the reason we're watching for new files on the disk is because motion will generate a lot of output and we don't want to basically hook into motion because it's going to be generating tons of output that is more than you could possibly process using object detection on a Raspberry Pi or using an API. So instead, we're just basically going to look for the files as they're written to the disk. And as it finds one, it will send that one off to the AI service and it will ignore everything that comes in while that file is being processed. And then it gets the results back. And after the results are passed back, then it will then restart the observation of the disk and grab another file and send it off and so on. So that is kind of how this works. So we're going to have that script watching for changes on the disk. The disk is then going to notify the detect script that something was written to the disk. Then from there, the detect script is then going to call Azure Cognitive Services, which is the suite of services that I'm going to be using for object detection. And those are in the cloud. So it's going to basically take the file, upload it to Azure Cognitive Services, Azure Cognitive Services is going to run object detection on that particular image, and it's going to send the results back. And those results are then going to be useful for putting the boxes around the objects on the image so that the script will then perform that operation by drawing the boxes and putting the labels and the confidence scores on the image. And then once that's done, it will then send that by way of email and it's going to be using a queue for this. So instead of sending one email per image, it's going to queue them up. And then every minute or so it will send a new batch of images to your email address, however you set that up. So this is pretty similar to what we had before, but instead of the AI being on board, the AI is going to be in the cloud. So the next thing we want to do is set up Motion. Now Motion is actually really easy to install because it's just an apt package. So to install this, just run apt get install as root, and then you know, of course install Motion. Now I've already got the latest version on mine, so it's not going to install anything. But to configure this, next we're just going to run nano for slash etc slash motion and then do motion config. Now there's a couple of things in this that we'll have to set. So uh, there's some parameters that we have to turn on and, and, and tweak in this config file to make sure everything's up and running. So the first thing that we'll need to set up is the target directory. Now this is the output for pictures, snapshots, and movies. Um, the pictures are what we're mostly interested in. So I'm going to put this in images slash in. And now that's the, uh, that's going to be the input folder for the detect script. So that's where it's going to write, uh, those images too. So. Once you have that set, the next thing to set is the video device. Now this is the source for the camera. So to find that you can, uh, either know it or, uh, you can run a little utility to list your USB cameras and your other cameras that you have available. So you can use a video for Linux or V4L2 dash CTL, and then do dash dash list, um, 
devices, and that will show you a list of all your devices. I'm gonna be using this Logitech webcam and it's on video one. So I'm gonna do slash dev slash video one. So let's go back into my file and um, that is going to be what I put in right here. So I've set my target directory. I've set my video source. Now there's some other things that we need to tweak for uh, the resolution and the sensitivity. So the resolution is the width and the height. So we want to use the width and height that's going to work with your camera. So I'm using 1080p on this particular USB webcam. So width is going to be 1920 and the height is going to be 1080. Now the frame rate, of course, is how many frames per second you want to capture. 30 is the default. You can change it to 10, which is probably useful uh, good enough for video detection on a video camera for something like a security device. Um, if you want to do higher frame rates, of course, if your device supports that, then that works fine too. But 30 is fine for this. And the other thing that we need to tweak is threshold. Now threshold controls the sensitivity to motion. So the higher the number, the less sensitive it is. So if you want to make it very sensitive, you lower the threshold. If you make, make it more or less uh, not very sensitive. You can increase the threshold to more than 1500. 1500 is default. And that seems to be a good number uh, for most use cases. So I'm going to stick with that. And once you have all of those defined, you can hit control O, save your file and hit control X. And now motion is ready to start doing its thing. Now we want to make sure that directory is where we need it to be for the output. So you'll do make deer slash images and which I already have. And then uh, you can do make deer slash images slash in to ensure that it's already there. And I'm going to need one other folder as well. I'm going to call it out, which is already there as well. But in any case, once you have these images uh, folders created now, motions configured and code project AI is configured. The next thing that we'll need to do is get the uh, glueware that is that, that, that script that kind of connects these two together and we'll need to download and configure that. So the first thing we need to do is get the Azure Cognitive Services uh, set up and running. Now to do this, we're gonna be using the computer vision uh, component of this. So if you type in computer vision into the search up here, we'll see the services called computer vision right here. And we can then create a new one and this will allow us to create one of these inside of a subscription on Azure. So you can pick whatever subscription you have available and I'm going to put it into this. I'm going to call it, um, create a new one and I'm going to call it, um, vision demo and then click okay. And you can put it in a region that's relatively close for you. And, um, I'm going to call mine, uh, service vision demo as well. So the, the resource group and the servers have the same name. I guess I could put dash RG after this or something, but I'm not going to. Now for uh, demo purposes, we can use the free tier. It has 5,000 calls per month, uh, but the standard tier would probably be more uh, conducive for something that you might call production. So you would have to limit this if you only wanted to do 20 calls per minute up to 5,000 calls per month. Uh, that's basically going to be 5,000 images that you can process per month. And now you can throttle the script if you want to only do maybe one image per minute or something like that. That would probably keep the threshold within this limit as well. And you can do the freak here. But in any case, you just figure out what you're going to be using and then kind of project what you're going to be using based on the utilization pattern that you put into your code. So uh, you can then acknowledge the terms of service and then basically take the defaults on all of this other stuff, identity, networking, and uh, tags. Now the basics one is making me wanting to, I need to make this unique. So I'm gonna call it blaze vision demo and um, call it that. And then once I'm done, I'm gonna click review, review and create and then create the service. Now this takes a few minutes to create, so we'll come back when it's done. So I've got the resource pulled up right here. Now the resource itself is able to do a lot of things that we're not gonna be even getting into, uh, but a few things that it does do is it's able to label images. Basically it can generate a caption when you pass it an image, it's able to do object detection, which we're gonna be using today, which is the ability to tell you where in the image an object might be. It can extract text from images and it can do a lot of things like that that are pretty common for computer vision. But we're mostly interested in the ability to just put the boxes around objects so that we know what the object is. And then we're gonna use that to determine how we're gonna manage that image once it's back on our side from our script. So we're using this particular service right here. 
Now, the things that we are going to be most interested in in this particular service is the endpoint and the keys, because that's what we're going to have to have to configure the script that we're going to be running. So um, I'm going to leave this up and we're going to grab these settings in a moment when we actually pull up the script. But we're also going to be using the keys right here. And the keys are the main thing that we need to authenticate. And then the endpoint, of course, is where we're going to configure our script to talk to once we have our script ready to go. So now we're going to install NVM. It's pretty easy to install. So we're basically just going to run a command that's going to download a script and pass it into bash. So this is going to get it from the repository from GitHub and then pass that into bash right here. So let's go ahead and run this and it's going, to, it's already installed on my box here. And so I, I don't really need to install it, but once you have um, NVM installed, you can do dash V and it should give you the version that you've installed, which I've got 39.01. Um, 0.39.1. And then if you want to get a list of versions of Node.js that are available, you can do NVM LS. And this is going to list um, lots of different versions of what is available uh, for Node.js. So now we want to install one that is more you know, current. So 18.16.0 uh, is probably good for what we're going to install. So if we want to uh, install something that is current, but not bleeding edge. Um, you can do this. That's the LTS version. And then this is the latest stable version. So LTS means that it's a, it's a long-term support. And this is the latest st uh, stable version with the newest features. But of course there's old versions if you require that. So you can go NVM install, and then you do V and then you just basically put in the whole, um, string right here and that will install that particular version of, of Node.js on your machine. So that will uh, install Node.js and NPM, which is the Node Package Manager, uh, which you'll need for this to run. So you can use NVM to switch between versions of Node.js, which is really a nice feature of it, but it's probably the easiest way to install Node on any platform, including the Raspberry Pi or other dev boards like it. So once you've installed uh, Node that way, the next thing to do is to install the packages that this will need to run. So let's go ahead and run that command. So this is the repository I'm going to clone. So I'm just going to click on the copy URL right here for this repo. And I'll put a link in the video description down below so you can uh, clone this. But I'm um, SSH into my Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to clone this repo using git clone. And git clone is uh, pretty straightforward. It's just going to download all of these files uh, to my Raspberry Pi in the Fedu CD detect, I should have just the four files here. So let's move these over to the images folder. And I'm going to move, move, uh, star everything that's, uh, and then put it in the images folder. And let's go over to this images folder here. And you can see now that I have all of these files here. I have the Azure version, the, the code project AI version. This is the input for this script. So it's the output for motion. Motion is going to write images to this in folder. This is node modules. I need to delete that folder. Uh, this is the output. Uh, and uh, this is the package.json for the dependencies. This is the settings. So let's go ahead and remove um, this node modules and reinstall everything just so that we're clean here. Um, node modules. And uh, now let's run npm install on this. And this should just read package.json and install whatever fresh in that. And this should only take a few seconds. It doesn't have a, a ton of dependencies here. Now that that's installed, I can then work with the settings here. So I'm going to use nano to edit the settings. And uh, I'm going to use nano settings.json file right here. Now, the thing that I'm most interested in this folder is the AZ endpoint, the AZ key. But to highlight some of the other things that you need to uh, look out for is to make sure that these are pointed to the right path. So this is images in, images out. This is the output for motion and the input for the script. And this is the output for the script to write the boxed images to. And then this is the height and width settings for the images that your camera is going to be capturing. You can ignore the setting that's for the code project AI server. These are the two that are for Azure. This is the mail, mail interval for however many seconds the mail will check for new images to send by way of email. Five is good for demos, but a minute is probably more realistic for a more of a production oriented uh, application. And of course, these are all the email settings for sending the email. So you can get those for your particular email service. So for our purposes here, 
we're basically going to change this AZ endpoint, AZ key, which are what we are going to get from the Azure portal. So let me pull this up right here and get the settings. So I need this endpoint. I really just need the host name right here um, because I already have the HTTP in the uh, file. So I'm going to copy the endpoint right there and just replace the, the host name right here and uh, put that into that right there. And then I'm going to get the key. I can get either one. It doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to paste this in right here and save that. I'm going to change my email settings while I'm offline so that you can't see my password, but this key and endpoint won't work either once I publish this video because I will have deleted it. But in any case, that's what you need to change and save it. And once it's saved, uh, we can then uh, start the service. So now we're going to start everything up. So I'm just going to start motion first. I'm going to start it in the background. Well, not technically in the background. It's just going to be running and still putting output. But I can still put stuff into the, the console here. So let's uh, start the node app too. So start node.azure.js. And this will start looking for uh, new images in that input folder. So if I do some things waving my arms around here, we should see some things right here. And there's some of the output that it's doing now. And it's doing some object detection in this. And so we can see that it's sending things up to Azure pretty quickly as it responds to it. And there's getting some pretty quick responses back and forth from Azure. So let's go ahead and see if this thing will send us an email here shortly as well. So here's the example image that it just sent to me. So I got this from the email. I have the, there's a person, of course, there's a bookcase, uh, some other junk that I have on my desk. And you can see that it is able to do some object detection on that particular uh, image using the models that are available on Azure. So this demo is more about the art of the possible. Now, there is certainly things that you could use this for. So if you had more of a constrained uh, device that couldn't do AI in the device and it was operating in an environment that was more independent where you couldn't have other services or servers running, you might want to use the cloud for your object detection in that kind of instance. However, if I'm going to be doing cameras, I'm going to prefer something on-prem. So if I was going to be using object detection in a local context, I would either do it on the device or I would use an NVR DVR, which then has integrated with it the ability to do object detection right on that NVR DVR. So this is more about just seeing what it is out there and what is possible. I do like the cognitive services that are available on Azure for a lot of other reasons, but you could use it for something like this. And it certainly is a part of a solution. If I was going to be building a cloud-based DVR, NVR, I would probably prefer it over other solutions like running code project AI in the cloud or something like that, because generally speaking, you can get a fairly decent performance out of something like Azure's cognitive services than what you would, able, would be able to get out of something like code project AI server on a virtual machine. It's probably going to be cheaper to run these software as a services from Azure or from AWS if you're running on AWS. In any case, it's just something that you can do and something that you can explore. So I'll leave the code out there on GitHub if you want to check that out. It's certainly something that uh, is worth playing with and some certainly something that I would integrate into other solutions, but probably not this one. So if you like this content, please consider subscribing to the channel, uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and share this with your friends. Drop me a comment down in the comment section down below and certainly look for future videos in this series that I'll probably be looking at some other more tangential topics uh, as we talk about home security and the kinds of things that you can do with DIY cameras and the like. If you like this content, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button. You can also like this content by clicking on the thumbs up or share this content with your friends and also comment in the comment section down below. You can also find me online at www.blaze.net or on Twitter at The One Mule. And as always, thanks for watching.